I don't know what she knew, but it had to be too much. I'm going to talk to CID tomorrow. I'm, I'm telling them that I don't want to be here no more. I'll do whatever I have to do, Mom. I'm coming. How do you suffocate yourself? No doubt in your mind. No doubt in my mind. I know my kid, man. Information from the military, no cause of death, no autopsy, a lot of evidence to suggest that foul play happened and so many questions yet to be answered tonight, Marnie. But this has to stop. We have to make a change. It could literally be your sister, mother, aunt, uncle. Stay woke. Hi guys, I'm Leah Nicole. If you're new, welcome. I hope you guys are staying safe and definitely staying warm. I appreciate your patience over the past few weeks because I moved into my new place. So this is clearly y'all a new setup over here, which I like it, but I'm trying to get used to it because the whole, the whole moving thing is stressful when you're moving into a new place. It's stressful. But now that I'm settled in, we're ready to go i definitely have another update thank you guys so much for 100k i have the 100k plaque up here thank y'all so much for supporting this channel like y'all we started this channel from zero not a scratch and now we're here so that i feel like this channel is more than like a youtube channel for me is definitely a ministry because not only do we bring awareness to these cases we also pray at the end of every video for the families um the victim families because i definitely believe with prayer it brings some type of healing because a lot of people they're going through grief they're going through hard times especially nowadays so i feel like with adding prayer you're bringing hope you're bringing some type of closure and i don't know about you but i believe jesus christ could do all things and everything so yes so i wanted to add that so thank you guys so much so much so much so much so much so for today's case i want to discuss the case of denisha montgomery smith one early morning back in 2022, my dad and I were watching the news. And this is something that me and my dad did every morning when I was living with my parents. Shout out dad. And I remember the initial details deeply troubled both of us. And since then, I haven't heard much about this case. On August 9th, 2022, Denisha was found dead inside an army barracks in Germany which serves as housing for some soldiers. What's alarming is that she had reported an assault by another soldier just three weeks before her death, but the circumstances leading up to her death have prompted her family to speak out as they firmly believe there's more to it. Denisha was a 27-year-old mother and wife. She was originally from Elizabethtown, Kentucky, and later she moved to Hodgenville, Kentucky to raise her family with her husband. Known as a dedicated mother and supportive wife, Denisha left a great impression on her loved ones. In an interview, her husband Josh remarked she was perfect, always a leader, always there for everybody. She just wanted us to be proud of her, and we were absolutely proud of her. Everything she did. Denisha's sister Jada also described her as a strong, bold individual who stood tall. Raised in a military family, Denisha was inspired to enlist at the age of 27. She had a desire to provide for her three boys, and she was passionate about forensic science. Denisha also dreamed of becoming a police officer in her hometown upon her return. Her mother noted Denisha's strong passion for caring and protecting people. Denisha later enlisted in the army in January 2021, eager to begin this new chapter of her life. She was deployed to Germany in 2022 for a nine month rotation with the 139th Military Police Company at Fort Stewart. In May 2022, while stationed in Wiesbaden, Germany, she was set to return home to the United States to her family in September 2022. 
Tragically, Denisha never made it back to her family. Now, during her time in Germany, Denisha appeared fine. She was in high spirits, driven, and definitely focused. She often updated her family about her well-being and never shared anything alarming until one night on July 19th, 2022. Clearly upset, Denisha video called her family and asked them to record the conversation. She revealed that she had been attacked by three members of her own squad after a night out. Denisha and four other soldiers have been enjoying themselves at a Germany water park, drinking alcohol before heading back to base. Initially, everything seemed fine, but on their way back to the barracks, Denisha alleged that they began to attack her. After this phone call, her family was extremely worried. They had never seen Denisha so scared or with bruises on her body before. She told them, quote, please record this. We might need this in case something happens. And for Denisha to feel like she needed her family to record this conversation, it was very clear that something sinister happened to her and she was extremely worried. In the 12 minute video, she shared, quote, I just want to come home. Look what they did to me. Denisha shared in the video sharing her injuries on camera. They choked me out. I kept telling them I can't breathe. I was like, I can't breathe. I was gasping for air. I ain't never been so scared in my life. I legit thought I was going to die in the car. Her family immediately contacted the Red Cross and reported the incident. But Denisha shared that she intended to file a report to the CID, but her first sergeant had been pressuring her to keep the incident under wraps. So after the FaceTime call she had with her family, she reached back out to her uncle and expressed to him that the CID told her she would be charged with assault as well because she smushed a female soldier and bit the male that was choking her. Even though Denisha expressed that it was clearly self-defense. And I feel like it's very important to really pay attention to the fact that Denisha was the only one out of that group that was reporting the assault that happened to her. So you would think that the incident would have been investigated, but one sergeant told her verbatim, self-defense in the military isn't a thing. So at this point, Denisha felt like she couldn't trust her higher ups, rightfully so, because no one was taking action to really protect her. She shared with her family that she really wanted to leave. She was stationed overseas last summer in Wiesbaden, Germany, when she made a frantic video call to her family and asked them to hit rec She had serious bruises, open wounds on her body. I just want to come home. Look what they did Oh my god. They choked me out. Look, they did they was doing me in the car. I was uh, gasping for air. I was like, I can't. bro, I ain't never been so scared in my life. I legit I thought I was gonna die in the car, bro. I'm going to talk to CID tomorrow. I am telling them that I don't want to be here no more. I'll do whatever I have to do, Mom. I'm coming. I can't be here no more. I don't trust them. I don't trust my leadership. I don't, I don't want to be here with none of them no more. Several days passed following the incident and Denisha remained out of contact with her family. She was unusually silent, causing concern for her uncle who tried to reach out to her multiple times. Eventually, Denisha reestablished contact with her uncle on July 27th. She replied, I'm sorry, I've just been depressed and didn't want to talk about it anymore. I decided not to say anything. I didn't want to end up getting in trouble too. I'm okay, my bruises are starting to go away. I've just been keeping my head down, staying in my room and going to work. When I get back to Stewart, I have another NCO who is going to get me in his squad. So I don't have to directly deal with those people. But I'm okay. I love you so much and I appreciate all of your help. Denisha decided to maintain a low profile after an unsuccessful attempt to file a report. She became discouraged and kept to herself, 
With only a month left, she was preparing to return home in September. Denisha planned to transfer to a new unit and was going to just lay low until she could return home. Denisha was eager to reunite with her husband and children. And one night while packing her belongings, Denisha was on FaceTime with her husband, laughing and joking around. It was clear she was ready to leave. But just three weeks later, on August 9th, 2022, Denisha was found dead in Lucia's clay barracks inside a closet under mysterious circumstances. The army informed her family a few hours later that Denisha had taken her own life and her case was promptly ruled a suicide. Upon learning that her case was quickly classified as a suicide, I thought it was very strange because they never did an intense investigation or even waited for an autopsy report to share the cause of death. Considering she had attempted to file an assault report in July, I think it's crazy. So we fast forward to September and she's no longer alive. The family definitely had a few questions on why her case wasn't investigated further. Why would they immediately assume she ended her own life? Based on what Denisha's family expressed, she was excited to return home and see her husband and her children. According to them, she had no intention of ending her own life. And they are investigating, but her family believes something far more sinister happened and someone is not telling the truth. This is all I wanted to do. Mom, this is all I wanted to do. Hey, Mom. Hey, Jada. Hey, Mom. I love you. Bro <laughs> Look what Brooklyn. Me. Oh, my God. That looks like a f uh, knife or something. Uh, I kept telling them, I was like, I can't breathe. I was like, I can't breathe. I was gasping for air. I was like, I can't. bro, I ain't never been so scared in my life. I legit, I thought I was going to die in the car, bro. I was like, just let me out of the car. But they wouldn't let me out of the car. And then all this happened. I'm going to talk to CID tomorrow. 21 days later, on August 9th, Denisha Montgomery was found dead in her barrack. That same day, the Army told Denisha Montgomery's family that she took her own life. And they said that... We're sorry to inform you that your daughter has uh, committed suicide by suffocation. And I said, how do you suffocate yourself? I know that my daughter wouldn't kill herself. No doubt in your mind? No doubt in my mind. I know my kid, man. The Army released a statement five days later confirming Denisha Montgomery was found unresponsive in her barrack and said... The incident is currently under investigation by U.S. Army Criminal Investigation Division. Nika Light is Denisha Montgomery's aunt. She served 13 years as an Army sergeant and was awarded the Purple Heart. But it doesn't make any sense. How are you still investigating when you prematurely said she committed suicide? That tells me that you've already have a determination. Something in the back of my mind told me that when she was attacked on the 19th of July, that there was something bigger at play. Something told me that her life was in danger. I know she didn't commit suicide. No doubt in your mind. No doubt in my mind. Her sister, Jada. I don't believe it. I don't believe mm -mm. it. Um, I don't believe it either. Do you think your sister was murdered? I do. It's just by who and when. And how many? And how many knew about it and how many covered it up? I don't know what she knew, but it had to be too much. You know, like I said, my daughter told me she was scared. I've never heard my daughter say that ever in her life, ever. She wasn't scared of anything. I talked to her that night, and you're not going to tell me that she was anything but happy and ready to come home. And this video to her husband dancing to their wedding song. And that's all we talked about is what we're going to do when she got home. The very first thing she wanted to do was go to Walmart. I can't make sense of it. It's a nightmare. Every day I wake up, it's a nightmare. No one has inquired with the family about the assault. We have taken upon ourselves to get justice for Denisha. We have taken it upon ourselves to collect all evidence, to show that Denisha was not suicidal, to show that she was attacked and afraid for her life, and to show that um, she was ready to come back home. My, my daughter came home. They didn't give me no autopsy report. 
no cause of death. Where is all that? Where is all that at? How dare you allow my niece's death to be in vain? How dare you prematurely tell us that this strong, beautiful individual took her life when we know better? We want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but. I am Denisha Montgomery Smith. This family, no information from the military, no cause of death, no autopsy, a lot of evidence to suggest that foul play happened and so many questions yet to be answered tonight, Marnie. And then the Army told the public and requested everyone to refrain from posting information to social media regarding this case. After the family received the Army's public statement, they felt extremely uncomfortable, especially because the Army never did a thorough investigation. The same day they found her, they already ruled her case as a suicide. The Army also expressed that the local police didn't find anything suspicious when they arrived at the scene. Despite the Army stating Denisha's death was a suicide, they shared that they are actively investigating her death and following all possible leads. However, the Army has not contacted the family once to ask about a possible assault. The Army also granted a no contact order for all of the individuals in the car with Denisha that night protecting them from having any contact with her family. The CID claimed that on that night at the water park, two individuals who were not part of Denisha's group tried to sexually assault her in a restroom. The people in her group that was in the car that night whom Denisha said assaulted her tried to actually help her by chasing the people away that tried to assault her. Um, the CID told us on the phone that that night at the water park, two individuals that were not with her tried to sexually assault her in a restroom. But they stated clearly that the people that were with her, they tried to chase them down in a sort and they were trying to help her. Now the story that the CID shared with the public was completely different than what Denisha shared with her family that one night. Denisha's family was deeply concerned and was calling on the FBI to investigate Denisha's death. Iowa Senator Chuck Grizzly also sent two letters to the Department of Defense requesting additional information about the investigation into her death because he knew some of the details weren't adding up. In his letter to Army leadership, he asked for the full file of the investigation and called out specific incidents that he said needed clarification, including allegations that Montgomery was told she would be disciplined for fighting back against her attackers if she reported the assault. He also asked the Army to clarify whether Denisha successfully reported the assault prior to her death and if an investigation was ever conducted. The Army shared, we extend our heartfelt condolences to the Montgomery family and have provided them comprehensive updates on the completed law enforcement and command investigations into her death. We continue to encourage all those experiencing personal difficulties to seek assistance. Unfortunately, no charges have been filed since and the Army maintains that Denisha died by suicide. Another unusual aspect of Denisha's case was the final reports and the original report regarding her assault and death. According to a final report issued by the United States Army, Denisha took her own life by hanging on August 9, 2022 while deployed in Germany. But the initial report says her leadership did not know of any behavioral health issues while the final report says Montgomery Smith was suicidal because she was dealing with financial troubles and marriage problems. But her husband Josh shared, quote, no marriage problems. It was just her being gone and feeling lonely. She was supposed to come home just a few weeks following her death and that she was excited to be back. The final report also says that Denisha's fellow soldiers were restraining her because she was drunk and trying to jump out of the moving car, but the initial report says more force was used than necessary. The initial report also says that she was assaulted during this incident, while the final report claims she was not. Three weeks before 
Three weeks before Denisha Montgomery's death, she called her family from Germany to say that she had been assaulted and that she'd feared for her life. Now we have obtained video of that incident in question. And just a warning, the video you're about to see, you might find difficult to watch. In the first, Denisha is seated in the front passenger seat. There's clearly an argument between Denisha and the other woman in the car. She asks to be let out of the car when the officer in the back seat appears to put his arm around her neck. One of the officers yells, get that blank blank back in the car. In the third video, Denisha is laying across the back seat on top of three seated officers. One of them holding her down appears to cover her mouth. Denisha can be heard saying she cannot breathe. I watched the assault. They seen the assault. If that had been me in the back seat and uh, say it was the general's daughter, I would be arrested. After Senator Grassley's letter, the Army played three videos for Denisha's family of what transpired in the car and said no assault occurred, despite the fact that the investigating officer in Germany determined in his report that Denisha was in fact assaulted. According to the Army's official CID report, the officers in the car said they could not provide an explanation for her actions and had to quote restrain Denisha that she became belligerent and tried to exit the car several times while it was moving, but stated they did what they could to prevent her from harming herself. It looked like another George Floyd incident. We was outraged. I mean, it's clear as day on the video in front of our eyes. The initial report also raised concerns about the position of Denisha's body. The report stated that Denisha was found in the barracks standalone closet with her knees touching the bottom of the closet and her feet on the floor. One of the investigating officers did share that the way her body was positioned was abnormal because she could have stood up at any time. The autopsy report concluded that she died of suicide, but Denisha's manner of death is never shared in the initial report. And I can understand if some of you had questions about whether the cameras were working because I did too. And it turned out that the cameras throughout the barracks were not recording at the time of her death. According to the army, they were on but the recording was accidentally turned off. One of Denisha's sisters, Brooklyn Price, shared that she was ending her military career due to the traumatic events surrounding the loss of her older sister. She shared with the public that she doesn't feel safe or at ease. She did share on TikTok and boldly shared the story about her sister and how she would never stop bringing awareness until her family receives justice. TikTok, I need your help to make this go viral. We need to elevate PFC Denisha Montgomery Smith's name. My sister, Denisha Montgomery Smith, she was on a rotation in Germany for nine months, but she only made it to eight months. During her stay, she went to an amusement park with four of her battle buddies, and she ended up getting brutally assaulted by all four of them. She made a FaceTime video call to us, the family, and asked us to record it. She said that she didn't trust them and she was in fear for her life. She also mentioned and literally showed us in the video that she, they were holding her mouth like this. And she said, I was literally afraid to die. Right after that video call, we, the family, made a call to the Red Cross to be able to get her home. That didn't do nothing. She stayed in Germany. They didn't do nothing to get her home. 21 days later, she's found dead in her barracks room. Not only did we get news that my sister died in Germany, but we also got told that she died by suicide by suffocation. Ain't it really weird how in the vehicle on the way back from the amusement park, she literally said that they were choking her and holding her like that? Their chain command in Germany also pushed out orders for none of the soldiers to talk about it, post about it, or talk to any of the family about it. But what's crazy is this soldier right here he did. And not only did he post about it, but my sister pulled him over and his friends in the vehicle and she ended up letting them go without a ticket or anything by orders. But it's weird because he posted that and then he ended up dead as well in his barracks room, just like my sister. Now, a lot of people might think it's just a coincidence, but that's awfully ironic that literally right after he reposted my sister's story, after getting orders not to even talk about it, post about it or anything, he was found dead. And they ruled his death from a seizure. They said that he died from a seizure, but he was found with bruises and 
beating marks on him. So how do you get that? Now I know you might not care and this might not go viral or whatever, but this has to stop. We have to make a change. It could literally be your sister, mother, aunt, uncle, brother, whoever. We need to make this stop. We need to bring justice to PFC Denisha Montgomery Smith. Guys, I look hit, but I don't even care. I don't even care. I don't. I just now turned in all of my CIF. I am almost out the military. I've been in the military for almost five years, and as a lot of you know, I have had a lot of trauma throughout my military career, and I'm just so glad that I can finally flip the page and start a new chapter. That's why I haven't really been on here as much. Because of that, I've been trying to focus on transitioning and getting my stuff ready to go because your girl's about to be unemployed, so if you're hiring, let me know. On a real note, I kind of want to just, you know, stay home for a bit with my family, you know, spend time with my baby and everything. Maybe try and get, like, a remote job if I can. And then, of course, advocate for my sister and other people. I want to advocate for Denisha's that are going through what she went through before they become like she did. I want to save lives. I want to be a part of something bigger than me. I really hope some opportunities come up with me being able to travel and not have this uniform on, being a civilian on the other side, where I can actually go out and fight. I feel like I can do more fighting out of uniform than in uniform. It's so weird because I actually did plan on staying in the military for five more years, like about three, maybe two weeks before my sister died in the military. I re-enlisted for five years. Personally, before my sister's stuff happened, I personally haven't seen anything crazy. Like, I, I was kind of um, blinded by everything. Like, I did not see what actually happens in the military. But her death, of course, opened up my eyes to the reality of the organization. And, I mean, I'm not glad, of course, what happened to my sister, but I'm glad that my eyes were opened because now, through her, I can hopefully help other people and save lives. As soon as I got out of school and then joined the military. But now I feel like it's my turn to finally find what makes me happy, especially after what's been happening the past couple years with my family. Um, I feel like I owe it to myself and my family to find what makes me truly happy. I'm really hoping in the next couple weeks or days I can give you guys an update. I know there's stuff in the works I can't mention yet, but as soon as I can, I promise you guys I will let you know. But cross your fingers and pray or happy thoughts, whatever you do, because we're really hoping that there's going to be some court-martialed people soon, and that people are going to get account, like, face what they've done, or, you know, and I know I'm kind of rambling, but I just want to say thank you to everyone that still checks up on me and everything like that, and my family members, and it's stuff like that that makes me feel, like, super good, like, like, so grateful, and I, I'm grateful for everyone that supports what me and my family are doing by fighting for justice for Denisha and just you know being aware and helping others be aware hey guys i'm back home and i'm visiting my family my family is throwing me a retirement party and it's tonight so i'm very excited i just now went to go visit Denisha's grave and i was just talking to her and just laid down on her and this does not get any easier as the time goes on. I know that she's gone. I know she's still with us, but I know that her body, her bones and everything are there, but she's not there. But every time I come home, I have to go see her. Just, I just have to, I just have to, I'm trying to find peace. I just let her know that we're having a party tonight, that her babies will be there, my baby will be there. Um, our mom will be there, our father will be there, um, just everyone will be there, and it is as much about me retiring as much as it is for her, because I know she's so happy I'm getting out. I know she's jumping and just so happy that I made it out, because there are so many people that don't get to make it out the military alive. 
tonight we're gonna be painting pumpkins and we're gonna put them by her on her grave and everything by her headstone so that's gonna be really fun and then we'll probably either come out today or like tonight or tomorrow morning and bring them to her you know and leave them there um her husband and kids have been a great doing a great job decorating for every holiday that she's missed on so um yeah yep um she denisha she loved holidays literally like i would be like you know we're adults whatever but no she was like forget that like we're dressing up like let's go like let's go trick-or-treating like she was that she was like that like she was so fun like it wasn't like oh we don't decorate like no she went all out denisha she if she could have afforded to do like more whenever she was here then yeah she would have went all out all out but she even like would do her own costumes make them homemade and they would be amazing like she truly was the holiday no holiday is the same without her like even like the ones that aren't even like the major holidays like christmas and whatnot just even like halloween like stuff like that like she made holidays fun but I'm really glad that I got to stop by her grave and get to be here because I all the time just wish I could be here. Like even when it's pouring rain, I feel like that would be the best time to go. Like I wouldn't go one day when it's just pouring rain. I can just lay there. It's just like relieving the tears, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's just like yeah, like, I talk to her, you know, while I'm at home, you know, like, I'll, like, you know, think of her, see something, and be like, I love you, sis, but just, like, being here, especially with family, of course, seeing her kids, seeing our mom, seeing our dad, seeing, you know, just our family in general, it is just, like, wow, it really does, it just, like, hits, and... I'm just so grateful that she left behind three sweet baby boys to live on for her in her name. And I know she's so proud. I even told her while I was sitting there on her, I was like, your boys are doing amazing. You did amazing. Your husband's doing amazing. I'm, I'm kind of ranting. I'm sorry. I just... Grief is weird. It's super weird. Denisha Montgomery Smith was a beautiful wife, a beautiful mother, a beautiful sister. She had family that loved her and was expecting to see her in September. But sadly, something happened to Denisha. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I do feel like we should be praying for this family because this case is definitely fresh. It just happened in 2022. We're in 2023 now and a year has passed and they're still looking for answers. They, they haven't received any sort of closure because the fact that Denisha called her family that night extremely sad, ex like she was scared she was depressed something happened you know what i mean no one calls their family and tells them hey i've been attacked please record this just in case something happens unless that night she feared for her life and for her to report the incident and it not be taken with care and not be investigated that's unacceptable for me. You know, her sister, she's still uploading on her TikTok, still bringing awareness for her sister. And watching some of her videos, I can still see that that hold, that uncertainty, because her case is not solved. Denisha's case isn't solved. Everybody knows something else happened. So I definitely feel like we need to pray for this family for just answers, for healing, for peace. You know, her sister shared that Denisha loved the holidays. We have the holidays coming up. We have Thanksgiving, we have Christmas, we have New Year's. And imagine going into these holidays and you don't have your loved one there with you. You know, they died under, sus under suspicious circumstances and you don't know why imagine that imagine going into the new year still still feeling unsure still as a mother 
not knowing the truth as a father not knowing what happened to your baby girl so please look at this like it's a real thing because i know often there's a lot of channels um my channel as well like there's a lot of platforms where we talk about true crime and missing and you can easily forget that these cases they're real life this is real life these are real people this is not a game this is not a story we just okay we're just gonna share with you for likes and shares like no this is real life and that's why i feel like it's very important to pray for these families because you never know a prayer that prayer could have helped that mother just get out of bed that morning and start her day that prayer could have encouraged you know the family to to realize that people are listening that you have supporters you have help you have people that are praying for you so guys let's pray for this family Denisha's case there's a lot of holes in it and I feel like there's a lot of questions that need answers so let's pray Father God, we all come together and we pray for this family. We pray for Denisha's husband. We pray for her children. We pray, Father Lord God, that you bring healing and closure for her husband and her children. I know right now they're probably asking about their mother. And I know that he's trying to be strong and to keep his family still going and still have a smile on his face but i know that there's days where he's grieving because he probably felt like he couldn't protect his wife he probably felt like you know there's no hope so father lord god i pray for him right now i pray that you uplift him every morning when he goes and takes care of his children i pray for denisha's parents her sisters father lord god I pray, Father, Lord God, that you give them the strength, the peace, and the inner healing. I pray that you provide them with the truth. Every single thing that happens in the dark will always come to light. And I pray, Father, Lord God, that there's pressure applied on this case. I plead the blood of Jesus over her family. I pray for protection over her family right now in the name of Jesus. That asks you, Father, Lord God, while they're traveling, while they're going to to the store while they're going to work father lord god i pray that you protect them i pray that you protect her little sister who's constantly um bringing awareness for denisha i pray that you protect her and her family father lord god i pray father lord god that you keep them close especially during these holidays i pray father lord god that you could just give them a rest a rest that only you can provide a peace that only you can you can provide a love that you only could can provide and i ask you father lord god that you protect my subscribers lord god i ask you father lord god that you cover us with your blood you protect us father lord god when we're going to work when we're going to school and i ask you father lord god to also help us with discernment i pray father lord god that you send your holy spirit to help us when we're not supposed to be around certain friends around you know certain people that don't really have our best interests i pray father lord god that you open up our ears open up our open up our um eyes to hear you and to see what you see so if there's anyone that's in a, if there's anyone in our life that is not supposed to be in our life let us hear you let us pay attention to our intuition our discernment father lord god and guide us with our footsteps every single day i pray father lord god that whoever watches this video i pray father lord god that you touch their hearts so that they can always encounter you father lord god so that you could bring them peace and healing if they lost a loved one if they're going through a time right now where they're angry at you i pray father lord god that you take every opportunity for every person to meet you every bad situation i pray father lord god that they fall onto you and depend on you. Depend on you for their strength and their hope. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for watching this case. Please share Denisha's case. Share it, share it, share it. Because this case just happened back in 2022. It's 2023 now, so 
it wasn't that far long ago if there's any cases that you would like for me to also bring awareness to i do have a case recommendation link in the description box below please go ahead and send them i will be doing um interviews soon with family members as well to bring more attention to these cases because oftentimes like this case this case was on a few platforms back in 2022 and then it's just died out like you didn't hear about it anymore so there's a lot of cases where it would get that exposure for a week or so or two weeks or a month and then you just forget about it so guys please keep sharing these cases keep praying for these families when you're you know on your way to the supermarket going to work keep these family members in mind because they're really going through it i i can't imagine being a mom and not knowing what happened to my baby girls you understand so please keep these families in your prayers again thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video Let's stay woke.